Hey, my name is Fabian and I create videos for Pixel Vision. And my colleague Benny and I, we spend a lot of time editing and watching 3D footage from our students to present it to you in the best possible way here on social media. And I'm talking about really amazing worlds or fantastic creatures and we often think to ourselves, man, it would be really nice to be inside of these worlds. And then we thought, why not? I mean, we have a camera, we have lights, we have a green screen room, not everyone has a green screen room, and we have well-educated VFX students. So let's do this. So today we're talking about how to set up a green screen room and light it properly. But disclaimer, we're talking about basics. I believe we're talking to people who are just getting started or want to test it out. And afterwards we'll show you how to use the green screen material in the post-production in two ways. First way, Premiere Pro, it's our software, Filmmaker software, and Nuke, that is the software of our VFX students here at Pixel Vision. So back to our projects, we want to be a part of these 3D worlds our students create, and we found two very good examples. This is a dim reel from a Pixel Vision alumni, Leonie Schuster, and she created a ladybug sitting on a mushroom in a kind of fairy tale-like atmosphere in a forest. And the second project is this yeah, lost room scene with a stroller in it. And it is made by Anna. She's a term five student here at Pixel Vision. So she's currently working on this project. I thought to myself it would be cool not just to put myself inside of these images and kind of look around, but to tell a, a little story. You can check it out at the end of the video. So stay tuned and watch till the end. All right, enough talking. Let's go to the green screen room and shoot the scenes. Hmm. It's a long way there, so I guess I need something to get me there quicker. And for setting up the green screen right, today I've got some help from a student. Hey Justin, how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Good, thank you. So in uh, which term do you start using the green screen room? Well, actually we start pretty early, in, in the first term already. In the first term, okay. Yeah. We're here in the green screen room, so why is it green? Well, in, uh, we use green or blue because it's a color that's the farthest away from our skin tone. We have two LED panels here. Yeah, it's important to use uh, two point lights because of the green screen has to be lit from both sides, otherwise there will be shadows. How bright should the green screen be? In general, you have to light the green screen a bit more than the subject. The only exception is if you are close to the green screen like we both are right now, because you see a lot of spill on our clothes. Is this uh, something you don't want, right? Yeah, that's right, because uh, if there's this green spill all over you, uh, the program will key you out and this will just look weird. Okay, next step, the camera. Okay, for the shot I need to tilt the camera to the vertical position because I want to be in the full frame and I use a 55mm lens because I think that in the reference video where I want to put myself in, um, yeah, it kind of looks like it's a 55mm lens too or something like this. Okay, so where do I have to place myself? As far away as possible because of the back bouncing, two meters at least. Okay, we use a tripod for the camera because in the scene there's no movement at all. That's very easy for us, luckily. But uh, of course, if you have a camera movement in the shot you want to place yourself in, you have to do the same movement in the camera as well. Okay, now I'm placed right in the frame, but I'm not lit properly. If you reimagine a video of the ladybug, maybe you have in mind that the sun is hitting the uh, mushroom from the back, but also a little from the right side of the frame, which is kind of about here. So um, that's where you put your key light in. And let there be light. You know, the ladybug is red and the, the mushroom is red as well. So maybe a little spill on my face, which is red, would be yeah kind of realistic. So please, Justin, can you um, plug in this light? I'm on it. 
Okay, that's a little too bright. Turn it down a little. This is our ladybug. So what I want to do is to walk from this side to the ladybug, right next to him, and then react to the flapping of the wings that he does. Um, can you maybe do the flapping of the wings here? Can you play the ladybug for me? Yeah, sure. I will play the ladybug for awesome. you. Awesome. Okay, now to the camera settings. You want to have the least amount of video compression. So go to your record settings and choose the highest luminance to color ratio. In this camera, the Sony a7S Mark III, you have the luminance to color ratio 4 to 2. And to better color correct and grade it in post, we use a lock setting. So that's a flattened image and you have a higher dynamic range possible in the post-production. It's acting time and... Uh, <laughs> it's acting time, but um, I have to take off my mask. It looks way better if I take off my mask. And, uh, but no worries, Justin is always two meters away from me, so nothing will happen here. Okay, turn on the camera, let's go. I'm in the roll, I'm in the roll. One, two, three. <laughs> it's a ladybug, I can't believe it. And action. Uh, no, you have to say action. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I did my best. Justin did his best as a ladybug. <laughs> and helping me out with the green screen uh, was really helpful. No problem. And now it's time for post-production and I'm gonna do a cool transition back to my office. Here we are another day at Pixel Vision and welcome back to my office. So I already imported the 3D project into Premiere and into my timeline. This is the ladybug sitting on a mushroom and I want to place myself right next to it. Next step is to import the chroma key footage we shot in the green screen room. I drag the video on top of the project and scale it down a little. Next thing I do is to create a mask because I don't want this lamp in the shot. Ooh, it's very close, but I think it will work. And now it comes to keying me out. Therefore, I need the effect ultra key. So go to the effect controls, take the color picker, and then we go to the green of the green screen room and click on it. And bang, you see no more green at first look. You see that I still have this little green spill, but that's no problem. We have some settings inside the ultra key effect we can use. Switch to alpha channel. The goal is to be completely white and everything else is black. And then it's just trying out the different settings and come to the best result possible. Always switch back to composited to, to check. So maybe a little less transparency, a little more pedestal. I want to look as if I belong to this scene in terms of colors. Pull down the shadows, put up the highlights. The next step is positioning and exact timing. So I need to match the flapping of the wings to my reaction. So the next problem I have to solve is that I want to be behind this grass. I just did that by copying the video track of the ladybug and then create a mask. Because it's so blurry, you don't have to do it completely accurate. Just make sure to add a mask feather. And now I'm behind the grass. I'm quite happy now, but if you compare me to the image of the ladybug, you see the image of the ladybug has, is very, very blurry. So it would be more realistic if not my whole body was sharp, but just my face. I did it like this. I added the effect Gaussian Blur and created a mask for my right hand side and also for my left hand side and then I let the computer track my movement. And by adding another Gaussian Blur effect and using keyframes I created a blurriness which decreases by the time I go forward. Two. All right. This looks pretty good to me. As I said before, this is about basics. So I wanted to show how you, yeah, do the post-production in Premiere Pro, which is a great software for videographers or filmmakers like me. I bet you wonder what happens after I sneeze. 
that's the moment where Anna takes over. She's a Pixel Vision student, so she's able to do the post-production in Nuke, which is a professional software for big Hollywood productions, where visual effects are involved. Anna is currently working on a demo reel project, which includes a really cool Lost Room scene, where I want to place myself in as well. And now she's going to explain to me and you how that works. So let's go to her. Hi, and now we're here with Anna. Hi. Hello. And Anna, how, did you have any problems with my footage? Or was it good, maybe? It, no, it's, it was good. Also. Cool. I didn't have any problems. <laughs> okay, so just in case you wonder why she's sitting so far away and maybe this looks a bit creepy, but <laughs> <laughs> it's necessary because of the corona pandemic. We have to have um, two meters distance, of course. So just for that. Let's go. What are those three items you see in the middle? These items are our footage, our videos. Here we have our green screen video, my demo reel. This is uh, supposed to be our background. And we have a stroller. Okay, so where does the stroller come from? Um, I had to rent it out from my 3D project uh, in Maya. That is the software we use for 3D animation and modeling. And yeah, we needed the stroller as a separate layer because we wanted to place you behind it. Now we have to make sure that our footage matches our document settings. For that, we create a reformed node. Press tab on your keyboard and mm -hmm. type in reformat. So now you have this little arrow. You just plug it into your footage, double click, and now you can see your output format and simply set it to your project settings. And then you need to add a time clip node. You can just um, type in your frame range. So, and now we have our final clip. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Great acting. What's the next step to bring me inside of this cool lost room? <laughs> <laughs> we want to get rid of this um, background. So now we have created a rotor node. And now you can simply draw around your object. And now the green must go away. Yeah, to do that, we have to create a key light. Now we put you in my lost room. <laughs> to do that, we create a merge node. You have two outputs. The A output is for your object in the front. So we want you to be in front. And the B um, output is for yeah, everything that's in the background. So you take your arrow with the B output and plug it into the room. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm there, but I'm not at the right position. We want to fix that with a transform node. Now you see you're in front of the stroller and that's because we rendered out the single stroller. Mm -hmm. You just create another merge node. Go to a merge node and hit one. Yeah. Yeah, there I am. Yes. And you see? I'm we can behind see. the holes. Yeah, yes. okay. <laughs> cool. You can see your legs. <laughs> Now uh, we can make some adjustments like um, color correction or we can also add an edge blur if your mask is too sharp. This looks almost perfect to me. Is there something missing? It's the shadow. Ah, okay. The shadow. I, have to, I have a shadow, of course. So, all right, if you want to add a shadow, uh, we can simply mark our nodes onto the transform node and simply copy and paste it. Then we can create a merge node. To match your shadow, we have to do a horizontal flip. Ah, okay, yeah, because it's like a mirror. Yeah, yeah. Just 
create a reformat node and simply click flop. flop. <laughs> it's not flip, it's flop. Ah, okay. We have to create a great node, change our black point value to like one. And the last thing, because our shadow is really sharp, we can add a blur and increase the size of the blur until it matches with the stroller shadow. Okay, this looks really realistic now. Your shadow follows your movements. So how long did it take you to put me inside of this room? Um, so I worked uh, together on this project with a friend of mine who is also a Pixel Vision student and it took us like 20 to 30 minutes um, with the color correction and everything else and adjustments. Okay Anna, thank you very much for letting me be a part of your project and um, I wish you all the best for it. Thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> Anna is doing some more detail adjustments. You see the result later. For me, it was really interesting to see how the different programs work in Chroma Key. The user interface in Nuke is very different to Premiere Pro. The reason for that is Premiere Pro is an editing software which has some compositing tools included. Nuke is a compositing only software. Imagine you want to do chroma keying for multiple scenes of a big Hollywood production with hundreds of notes. For this purpose, the user interface of Nuke is better visualized and way more flexible. As you may have noticed, you can drag and drop the notes, link them together or copy them. If you want to see a more advanced tutorial of Nuke, maybe how to chroma key footage inside a 3D area, please let us know in the comments. All right, that's it. I hope you've learned something, but just to make it clear, of course, it would be best to edit those two scenes in only one program, just for the better workflow. But we just wanted to show you two alternatives and show the difference between those programs and what advantages they have. Thank you all for watching and now enjoy my little journey through the worlds of 3D and visual effects. Run the film. Thank <laughs> you.